school and it's November 2. Well, coming up to the city of Hoboken on the right. Hoboken, New Jersey over here is only one square mile in area, yet we got more churches and bars and it's one square mile than any other square mile in all of America. That's what Hoboken all over the world. Now with the own logos on it, all comes back to American baseball. Well, here comes the side of the Erie Lackawanna. Cooper was a scientist for a new company called Motorola. A big time Star Trek nerd. A Trekkie who liked how Captain Kirk could talk to his crew members up on the Enterprise with this little sort of thorn he carried around. So Cooper says, I'm going to make this happen in my lifetime. So on April 3rd, 1973, Cooper picks up the first prototype cell phone, and of all the phone numbers he has, he decides the first phone call to make on that first cell phone is to his arch rival, his nemesis, the guy who bullied and tormented him all through high school, Joel Engel of Bell Atlantic in New York City. In front of a whole gaggle of reporters, he tells them three simple words. We beat you. The third, let's see the tunnel itself. It's underneath us. Dodgers collection of skyscrapers. And the standout building down here needs no introduction. It's the tallest building in the entire Western Hemisphere. It's so popular they were. Now today, after all these uh, years, the original footprints of the tower stood today. They're preserved as a living memorial for you folks to visit while you're here in New York City. And right, hopefully you guys get a chance to do this. It's free. So when you can, city, New Jersey, folks, this is the fastest growing city in all of America. Population here just keeps doubling every couple of years. Went from 50,000. Why don't you try to imagine all the things that this clock is going to see in the years to come? Because we have architecture laws on that clock. Uh, that one needs a little work. <laughs> How are you guys doing anyway? Good. All right, one more building in Lower Manhattan over here I'm going to point out before we talk about immigration. Then we'll take us a nice little break. All right, so hang in here. The break's coming. Off to the left at the river's edge of Manhattan is a building that's not very tall. It's an off-white color just over the tree line and has a pyramid shaped top to the roof. In fact, you can count six layers of the roof going up to the top. This is the New York Museum of Jewish Heritage. It's what we call here in New York City the Holocaust Memorial. It's actually designed and built by a couple of Irish architects. Now the irony is if you build this bridge here, it would have to be way longer than any of those bridges. Two and a half times long to be exact. Because he had to do what that bridge is doing right now. Take up the whole span of the East River in one shot. Boom. Then it had to be high enough off of the river so the ships in the Navy Yards behind it can pass under it. Now, Roebling's biggest obstacle is not the height nor the distance. He knows his technology can take care of that. Instead, his biggest obstacle was the greedy ferry companies in the city here. They were kicking back millions of dollars to the crooked city bosses to see that that bridge would never be built. All right, but then you got some help from the people of Brooklyn. Everybody look over here to your right. This is Brooklyn. Three million people live in Brooklyn today, give or take. Brooklyn is so big that if it still were a city of its own, as it was for a long time, Brooklyn would be the fourth most populated city in America. But at this point, Brooklyn realizes they can no longer survive as a city of their own. They need a municipality and the jobs of Manhattan. Brooklyn was prison of war camps for the soldiers and the sailors of the Continental Army and the Navy. Now remember folks, we lost about 3,000 brave men on the battlefield fighting for independence in the war of, in, you know, Revolutionary War. Few people realize we lost nearly three times as many. 11,700 plus, many as young as 13 years old, died as prisoners of war on those ships. The horrible conditions, they would put it. Exposure to hot, cold temperatures, starvation, infectious diseases, and in many cases beaten to death because they would not stand up and swear their allegiance to a king. The price of our freedom was never free. Well, in 18 editions, they would put it. Exposure to hot, cold temperatures, starvation, infectious diseases, in many cases beaten to death because they would not stand up and swear their allegiance to a king. The price of our freedom was never free. Well, in 1865, shortly before he was assassinated, President Abraham Lincoln officially commissioned this the Brooklyn Navy Yard. That's why I said the beginning trip. It was mostly women that worked around the clock, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for 100 years, building many famous ships to serve in the world's most powerful navy. And then in 1965, 100 years later, it all ended when somebody invented the jumbo jet airplane. And now you can see it's virtually empty. The Brooklyn Yard uh, probably had its a parking lot for those ferry boats to stay out of the swift currents at night. So it's pretty quiet over here in the Brooklyn Navy Yard today. All right, let's take another break, folks. But before we do, everybody turn around and look off the back of the boat. All right, here comes an iconic view of New York City that you're not going to see in any picture postcards. You got downtown Manhattan, downtown Brooklyn. Fabulous, friendly photographer here. The results. Want to come up here and uh, 
check your pictures out, see how you turned out. If you like it, buy it. If not, no pressure, go back to your seats, but you should see how you turned out. It's always fun to see yourself in pictures, and if you like it, buy it. If not, no pressure, go back to your seats. And you get to meet Magical Mark, our fabulous friend of photography here at the Circle Line. Go get him, Mark.